Good morning. And once again, we gather together for a service taken from a couch and experienced in your living room, your kitchen, your dining room, wherever you might be. It is the Sunday after Easter. We are still shuttered, but we still have the opportunity to gather together in spirit as God's people to celebrate the good news of Jesus' resurrection. And so I say to you, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead, Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for the day. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred. Open the doors of our hearts so that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God, the source of all life. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It was the day of the resurrection. And in spite of the incredible good news proclaimed by Mary, in spite of the fact that Mary yelled through the door to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. He's not dead. He's risen. In spite of that, 
the disciples were stuck in their minds and in their hearts on the bloody ground of Golgotha. They just couldn't get by the cross. And so there they were, huddled together behind locked doors, hearts racing, palms sweating, bodies shaking, minds racing, fear, incredible fear. And then suddenly into the midst of that very human situation, into the midst of that very pathetic situation, we see Jesus. And he says to them, peace be with you. Now, now listen, it's really important that we get what's going on here. It's important for us to get this, to understand it. See, when Jesus said, peace be with you, it wasn't a kind of 60s thing. It wasn't a lame greeting. He wasn't saying everybody get along, everybody be on the same page. It wasn't a warm, fussy moment. When, when Jesus said, peace be with you, he was bringing his life's work he was bringing his mission and his ministry. He was bringing the kingdom of God into that fear-filled room and handing it over to them. Listen, remember in, in the Last Supper, in John's version of it, Jesus says to his disciples, peace I give to you, my own peace, I leave with you, not as the world gives. How does the world give peace? Jesus was talking about the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome, the peace that came through military victory, the peace that came through violence and bloodshed and death, the peace that came and was sustained by military, political, and economic force and oppression. That's the peace of Rome. That's the peace the world gives. And in many places today, it's still the way peace comes. But that is not the peace of God. The peace of God was about justice being established. The peace of God was, was about love and hope being restored, about life being restored. The peace of God was about the world being transformed. That was what the kingdom of God was about. And, and that's what Jesus was giving to them. My peace I give to you. Take it. And, and, and then he showed them his wounds the wounds in his hand and in his side. And when he did that, he was saying, listen, this is what peace costs. This is what the powers did to me. But they didn't win. I'm here. I'm with you. My peace I give to you. My death, my resurrection, launched a new reality. And now it's up to you to take that new reality and take it out into the world, to every corner of the world. So as my father sent me, I am sending you. And we hear that and we go, what? He is sending this frightened group this pathetic group who left him in the lurch, who when he was hanging on a cross, ran away to protect their own skin. He's sending them out into the world to take God's new reality, God's peace. Well, well, Jesus knew they weren't up to it. He knew they couldn't do it, not on their own. And so he breathed on them. He breathed 
God's spirit on them. He breathed the same spirit that brought the world into being, the same God's spirit, the same breath of God that God promised Ezekiel would put sinew and flesh on the dry bones in the wilderness. This is a moment of creation and restoration for them, for the people of Israel, for all humanity, for then and for all time. Folks, make no mistake about it. The love that was unleashed, the new reality that was unleashed, the forgiveness that was unleashed, the peace that was unleashed by Jesus' death and resurrection needs to be unleashed in our world today. And if we listen closely today, we will hear the words of Jesus saying to you and to me, as the Father sent me, even so I send you. And before you say the task is too big, I, I, I'm not up to it. Remember, we do not stand and live on the bloody ground of Golgotha. We stand on resurrection ground. We live on resurrection ground. Remember last week. Last week, I invited you to take the things that hurt you, to take the things that make you sad, that depress you, that frighten you, and I invited you to leave them, to part them at the cross. Well, today... I'm inviting you to dream. I'm inviting you to pray for a vision of how God's new creation can happen in your hearts, in your homes, in your relationships, in our communities, and in our world. As the Father sends me, so I send you, but we cannot do it alone. And so, my friends, I'm asking you just for a moment to close your eyes, just close your eyes, and breathe deeply. Feel the presence of God. Bask in God's spirit. Receive God's Holy Spirit. We stand on resurrection ground and that changes everything. As the Father sent me, even so I'm sending you to take God's love, God's peace, God's forgiveness, God's new reality out into a broken world as soon as we can unlock our doors and get back to living. Amen.
Now let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we say, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles this we have received, and this we believe. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we praise you with all your creatures. They came forth from your powerful hand. They are yours, filled with your presence and your tender love. Praise be to you. Son of God, Jesus, through you all things were made. You were formed in the womb of Mary, our mother. You became part of this earth, and you gazed upon this world with human eyes. Today you are alive in every creature in your risen glory. Praise be to you. Holy Spirit, by your light, you guide this world towards the Father's love and accompany creation as it groans in travail. You also dwell in our hearts and you inspire us to do what is good. Praise be to you. Triune Lord, wondrous community of infinite love, teach us to contemplate you in the beauty of the universe for all things speak of you. Awaken our praise and thankfulness for every being that you have made. Give us the grace to feel profoundly joined to everything that is. God of love, show us our place in this world as channels of your love for all the creatures of this earth, for not one of them is forgotten in your sight. Enlighten those who possess power and money that they may avoid the sin of indifference, that they may love the common good, advance the weak and care for this world in which we live. The poor and the earth are crying out, O Lord. Seize us with your power and light Help us to protect all life, to prepare a better future for the coming of your kingdom of justice, peace, love, and beauty. Praise be to you. Amen. And now gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.